All right, welcome back. So today we are going to address some problems that have fractions in them and some problems that have variables in two different places. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about fractions. One thing, whenever you're solving literal equations, you, we've got to make sure that um, our final answer does not contain a complex fraction, and I don't want you to change any of the fractions to decimals. So a quick reminder about what a complex fraction is. A complex fraction is a fraction within a fraction. So a fraction over a fraction, I'm going to write a fraction within a fraction. So for example, I can't have an answer that says like x equals 2x minus 4 over 2 thirds or something like that, right? You can't have a fraction in the denominator. Like that's not an answer that's in simplest form. So we have to figure out how to deal with that. So let's take a couple of problems and some examples. So we're going to try um, this problem right here. We're going to solve for x and there's two different methods that I can use. One method is we can isolate the variable and then multiply by the reciprocal. So here I want to solve for x and so my x is right here. So to get that x alone the first thing I would have to do is add 6. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. I'm going to get 2 thirds x equals 3y plus 6. Now this is the part right here where 2 thirds is being multiplied by x. What I don't want you to do is say, oh, I'm going to divide everything by 2 thirds. I don't want you to do that because that's going to give you a complex fraction. So let's erase that. And the other option, instead of dividing by a fraction, well, whenever you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I can do now is I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal 3 over 2. Now the thing that people mess up here is, if I just write times 3 over 2 like this, that's wrong because I have, what I did first is I did 3y plus 6. So you have to put the 3y plus 6 in parentheses to say, oh, you do that first and then you multiply by 3 over 2. So the way this answer would look is you would cancel out the 3 over 2 times 2 thirds and you would get x equals, and I like to put my 3 over 2 in front, it's fine if it's at the end, but it's 3 over 2, and then in parentheses, it's 3y plus 6. And this answer is acceptable. If you want it to, you could go ahead and distribute the 3 over 2 if you want it to, and if you did that, it would look like this. It would say x equals, well, 3 over 2 times 3 over 1 is 9 over 2y, so it would be 9 over 2y, plus, well, 3 over 2 times 6 over 1, well the 2 would go into the 6 right here 3 times, so it would be 3 times 3, which is 9. And so that's one way to write the answer. So I would accept this answer, I would accept this answer right here, without these little ones on it. And then there's one other answer that I would accept, and that would be the second method that we're going to try to do. So the second method here is you can clear the fraction at the very beginning. This is the method that I prefer, right? You have a bunch of fractions in the problem. They're not going to go away. There's nothing to distribute. So what I would do is I would take this entire thing and I'm going to say, all right, I want to clear. There's only one fraction and the denominator is 3. So let's multiply everything by 3. You have to remember there are three terms here. You have to multiply all of them by 3. So 3 times 2 thirds x is going to give me 2x and 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and then 3 times 3y is 9y. And so now to solve for x, then we just isolate the variable. So we're going to add 18 to both sides. That leaves us with 2x equals 9y plus 18, and then we could divide everything by 2. And so another acceptable answer would be x equals 9y plus 18 over 2. So all three of these answers are acceptable answers. This is the method that I actually think is the easiest, but you're welcome to do the first method as well. All right, so with this one, 
we have the same equation that we were just working with before, but this time it wants me to solve for y. So typically when you look at that y, you're like, oh, well, that's easy. All I have to do is divide everything by 3. But don't write this. Just watch. If I go ahead and say divide by 3, I can't do that because I have um, a complex fraction. So we need to think about instead of dividing by 3, well, dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying everything by one-third. So really what we would do here is we would multiply both sides by one-third. And because there's more than one thing happening over here, then you would write one-third off to the side and put two-thirds x minus six in parentheses because we're multiplying everything by one-third. So this answer would look like this. It would be one-third and then in parentheses two-thirds x minus six equals y. And that is an acceptable answer. So we could stop there, but if you didn't like that answer, we could just distribute that one-third. And when you distribute that one-third, remember you're just multiplying your numerators and your denominators, so that would give me two-ninths x minus, well, a third of six is two. So it would be two x minus two equals y, or two-ninths x minus two equals y. So either one of those answers is fine. You just can't have a complex fraction in your final answer. It's just not fully simplified. So then the second method would be rather than um, deal with the fraction, we could go ahead and start this problem by clearing the fraction. And this again is my preferred method. So I'm going to take everything and multiply everything by 3 again. So it's going to look just like what we did in B. So I'm going to end up getting 2x minus 18 equals 3y, I'm sorry, not 3y, 9y, and, and then we would divide everything by 9. So we get 9y here, and then we would divide everything by 9, and then what I would get is 2x minus 18 over 9 equals y, and that is an acceptable answer as well. And just to take a look at this, these answers, if you think about it, this right here, 2x minus 18 divided by 9, if I were to divide each term by 9, I would end up with this answer here, right? 2x over 9 is 2 ninths x, and negative 18 over 9 is negative 2. So it's just another way of um, looking at these, at these answers. So all three of these are acceptable answers. So that's the tricky thing when you're dealing with problems with fractions is that there are often three answers that are acceptable. My preferred method, again, is to, when you see a fraction, is to just clear it because I think the problem just turns out to be a little bit easier. But whatever makes the most sense to you is how you should do it. So these next three problems, I want you to try them on your own. What I am going to do to solve these problems is I'm actually going to clear my fractions to start with. You don't have to do that. I will give you all the answers that are possible, but the work that I'm going to show you has to do with clearing your fractions. So try it in any way that you actually feel comfortable with. Okay, so here are the three possible answers that you could get for any of these three questions. The work that I'm showing here is me clearing the fraction. So for number one, I cleared the fraction by multiplying everything by 4 and ended up with 4e equals 3g minus 4m. Then I isolated the variable, and that's how I ended up getting my answer. But I'm realizing that I made a mistake. This should be over 3, that whole thing. should be over 3 there. So it should be 4e plus 4m, the whole thing over 3. That's the correct answer. And then... The, um, these are the other two. If you tried it the other way and are getting it wrong, make sure you ask me or somebody for help and um, figure out what you're doing. On number two, I cleared the fraction by multiplying by three. This is what I got. Remember when you clear a fraction that's outside the parentheses, you don't multiply what's inside the parentheses by that fraction. So I just have a two out here now. Then I distributed. You don't have to distribute here. You could choose to divide by 2, but then you might end up with a complex fraction at some point. So I always try to distribute in problems like this. So what I ended up with is this is the correct answer. If that's what I got, if I cleared my fraction, if I chose not to clear my fraction, you could have ended up with either of these two answers. In number 3, I do want to explain number 3 pretty completely. 
I multiplied everything by 3 to clear that fraction, and I had the same steps up until I started to solve for m. So when you solve for m here, I subtract it to b. I got 3a three, three minus 2b equals negative 8m. Then to get the m alone, I divided everything by negative 8. Now you might have here your answer. You might have said 3a minus 2b over negative 8 equals m. But really, negative denominators are not in simplest form. So I was thinking, okay, if I divide 3 a by a negative number, it's really negative 3a, and then negative 2b divided by negative 8, because this negative over this negative, this would end up making the second term positive. So to get the negative out of the denominator, what you do is you imagine that you're dividing each of these also by a negative, and the signs change, and then now you have a positive in the denominator. If you left the answer like this, it's technically not wrong, but if you're in my class, I would probably take off like a tenth of a point or something like that. And then here are the other two answers for clearing the fraction. So if you are struggling, be, please make sure that you are getting some help. All right, so the next weird thing that might happen is you might have some problems where you're asked to solve for a variable and it's in two different places. So for example, this one right here says to solve for a. Well, if you look to find a, well, there's an a right here, but there's also an a right here. And so you can't forget that there's two a's here and just pick one to isolate. You have to get a in one specific place. So, and we can't combine these together because we don't know what b and d are equal to. Like if this said 5a plus 3a, then we would just put them together um, and combine the like terms. But this one, I can't do that. However, if you think about factoring, you have a GCF here, right? Your GCF is A. So we're going to treat the A like it is a GCF. So we're going to pull the A out and put it outside parentheses. So then what I have is an A on the outside of parentheses. On the inside of parentheses, I'm going to have a B plus D because I just divided both of those terms by A, and that's going to equal D. So if you think about that for a second, why that makes sense, it's the distributed property kind of backwards. If I take that a and I put it back into the parentheses, it does bring me back to that. So that's how you know these two things are equivalent. But the reason we did that now is now a is in one place. A is being multiplied by b plus d. So to cancel out multiplication, we divide. So we're going to divide by this whole quantity here, b plus d. So divide everything by b plus d b plus d. So my answer here is going to be a equals d over b plus d. And now you might, and that's your final answer. You might be thinking, well, can't I cancel out the d's? And the answer to that is no, because remember when you have a fraction bar, the fraction bar is telling you you have to do the top and the bottom first. Because we have an addition problem here, you would have to add before you divided, so you can't just cancel these things out. Remember, you can't cancel terms out between addition and subtraction. You can only cancel terms out between multiplication signs. So let's go ahead and try number five. So number five is asking you to solve for y, and we have y in two different places. And so when we have that y in two different places and you can't actually combine these guys, you factor it out like a GCF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the y outside the parentheses, and then I'm going to divide both terms by y. So 5xy divided by 5 by y is just going to give me 5x. And now be careful, the y's here, when you do y divided by y, that's actually 1. You have to put minus 1 here. Whenever you're pulling out a GCF, an entire term will never cancel out. So then you get here that that is equal to 10. So now that the y is in one place, what I have to do is cancel out the operations on y. Well, the operation on y is that I'm multiplying it by this whole set of parentheses. So I'm going to divide by the entire set of parentheses, like this. And so then these cancel out, and then I'm left with y equals 10 over the whole thing 5x minus 1. And you could put the 5x minus 1 in parentheses, but the reason it's not necessary is because we have this fraction bar. And remember, this acts as a grouping symbol as well. So the 5x minus 1 is in my denominator. I cannot reduce this because of the subtraction sign. So this is my final answer right here. Okay, now that you've seen two done for you, I want you to try six and seven completely on your own. Stop the video and tune back in to see if you've done it right. 
So here are the two answers for six and seven. Notice for this one, I pulled out the A and then I divided by what was left. So this is my correct answer here. Over here, I just wanna point out, reminder, when you pull out the C, remember that term right there isn't gonna cancel out. You're dividing C by C, which is one. So you need to have a one there, and then you're left with the AB. So I divided by one plus AB, and there is your answer. Please make sure if you are struggling or getting these wrong and you don't understand why, that you're not just moving along, that you're actually seeking some help. All right, last two. If these don't look intimidating to you, please stop the video, go ahead and try them. But I am gonna take a minute to explain both of these because they have fractions and fraction bars, right? So in number eight, you have two choices to start this problem. You know you're solving for x, so you know you're gonna to have to factor that x out. You could start by factoring the x out, or you can start by clearing that fraction bar. I often like to try to get rid of my fraction bars first, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two here, Reminder that the twos on the left-hand side, they cancel out because it's like two over one. They're cross-canceling. And so what we're left with is 2x minus ax equals, go ahead and multiply that three times two to get six. Then because I've got x in two places, we're gonna factor it out, pull the x out, divide everything by x, and you're gonna get two minus a is equal to six. And then you're going to divide everything by 2 minus a, because we're trying to get the x alone, 2 minus a. And then my answer is x equals 6 over 2 minus a. And you have to stop there. You can't cancel out the 6 and the 2 because of the subtraction sign in the denominator. All right, now number 9. I would go ahead and clear that fraction to start with because I don't want to deal with any complex fractions. So let's start by taking the entire thing and multiplying the entire thing by 3. When I multiply the entire thing by 3, 3 times 2 thirds b is 2b, and 3 times 2ab is 6ab, and then 3 times 5c is 15c. All right, so now we want to get b alone, but b is in two places and I can't actually put those things together because 2b and 6ab are not like terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the b, so we bring out the b, and then we're gonna be left with two plus 6a equals 15c. And then to get that b alone, I'm gonna divide everything by two plus 6a, two plus 6a. So then my answer is b equals 15c over 2 plus 6a. There we go. Good luck.